impact. And uh, it's not all bad because uh, of that uh, calamity and the consequences, we were forced to look into uh, our uh, risk assessment, our risk management. And uh, we found out that there are vulnerabilities in our uh, system. And we, right now, we're strengthening this, uh, these gaps. And at the same time, we have discovered uh, methods to handle these things in the future. And, uh, and also, how to recover from uh, large-scale uh, you know, uh, delinquencies uh, resulting from the calamities. So those were the things that set us back. But I think uh, in the positive sense that this may also have allowed us to learn more, you know, to understand deeper uh, the nuances and the, you know, the, uh, the small details that uh, arise whenever these kinds of things happen. And in the Philippines, typhoons, you know, are something that are inevitable. So I, I think uh, these problems have been uh, way prepared as for the future uh, when we scale, uh, you know, to a bigger level. So sir, uh, given all those problems, um, what else do you think that the organization should improve on? Improve well, on and um, how do you think technology could help? Well, uh, we always take the viewpoint that there's always room to improve. So uh, we're always on the lookout. Uh, we're sensitive to new uh, new things in the market. We're sensitive to our clients' needs. We're sensitive to the technology that is being developed uh, you know, elsewhere. Uh, we're also uh, watching how other microfinance operators are uh, developing. Uh, all in all, uh, we're open-minded about the use of technology and uh, being sensitive and flexible enough to adjust to the changing times. Um, one of those things that helped us tremendously uh, is the management information system, the MIS. So uh, since we obtained our MIS in 2008, we were able to better track our loans and also uh, utilize this in such a way that uh, we could better understand the behavior uh, and patterns of our operation as well as the profiles of our clients. And with this uh, newfound knowledge, uh, we could uh, design better processes and products that would better suit and uh, make us uh, more cost effective and efficient. Sir, uh, since you've mentioned the products, what are the uh, what are the plans of these organizations when it comes organization when it comes to products and services? Uh, when it comes to products and services, we, we want to come up with a portfolio. Uh, or a basket of uh, offerings to clients, especially the target clients, the very poor Philippine families, something that will be uh, attractive to them, something that will be uh, 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 resonating to their dreams. You know, if, if a Philippine family uh, stricken with poverty uh, has a dream of uh, providing a better life, better education, better future for their children especially, to break the cycle of poverty. And uh, our, our aspirations go beyond those dreams. We tell our clients, do not just dream of moving out of poverty, but dream to become rich and wealthy so that you can help others as well. You know, uh, it's not just yourself, it's not just about you, but it's everything else around you. So we, we give them that kind of <coughs> uh, mentality so that uh, they will strive harder, they will uh, dream dreams, they will aspire for, uh, you know, ambition. So that's what we're, we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to mold the, uh, our character psyche so that they're not just content in having three meals a day, but really uh, developing their full potential. Sir, actually, I'm already down to my last question. Do you plan to uh, utilize more technology solutions to expand your organization? Oh, yes. Uh, like I said, we're open-minded. And uh, 
one of those probably it's not really new but uh, you probably heard about this with arba it's uh, mobile banking yes. uh, we hope that uh, in the near future we can uh, utilize uh, that technology and hopefully uh, break barriers like uh, the barrier of having a mortar and brick branch you know we we don't have to have uh, uh, physical branches uh, in, in many parts of the country in order to reach out to clients but if we have mobile banking Whenever you have a uh, cell phone signal, you know, you, you could uh, transact business with potential clients. And uh, hopefully that's one of them. And we're also looking to smart cards and uh, what have you that are being developed uh, elsewhere in the microfinance world. So we're open about that and whatever we can get our hands on that is within our reach uh, as far as our resources are concerned. Uh, we are looking forward to those kinds of things and we hope that uh, in the end all of these things will really benefit our clients. Yes. It's, it's this, the service, quality of service that we're really after uh, and also at the same time improving the lives of our staff. We, uh, some of our staff are also uh, wrought in poverty. You know? Some of them are also very poor. And, uh, as we as we teach them to teach clients, they realize that, that they can also move their families out of poverty. And so some of them are resigning because they said they want to get into business also. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, okay, one final question, sir. So um, can you give us a sample of one success story you have? You have, you have, you from my, your microfinance. We have service. thousands of success stories. Uh, but the, one of the smallest success stories I can I can tell you tells something about the character of poor women, especially those who have never experienced uh, earning money for themselves. They have always been dependent on others, their their family, their husbands, to to feed them and to feed their children. There was one instance when we were presenting our program in a small community, and after having done so, this. Uh, this tiny woman, uh, middle-aged, uh, approached me and she said, uh, Mr. Guanson, uh, I would like to join your program, but I have no business experience and uh, even a 3,000 loan scares me. <laughs> she said, uh, can I uh, join you and just borrow 1,000 pesos? And my heart melted and, and, and I told her, of course, why not? Uh, so she borrowed 1,000 pesos and I asked her, what will you do with the 1,000 pesos? And she said, well, I will just imitate my neighbor and I'll, I'll buy some biscuits in Divisoria and repack them and sell them to the Sari Sari stores nearby. And that's what I plan to do, she said. So she did that. And uh, when she started repacking and distributing to the Sari Sari store and, we, and when she started to earn real money, she could not wait to get the five thousand loan. So that's what happens. That's the empowerment that we want our clients to, you know, to achieve. Because uh, once they re realize, they recognize that they have ability to create wealth for themselves and their families. Nothing can stop them. That's our wish. And uh, right now, uh, we have clients who are borrowing by the tens of thousand, even a hundred thousand. They started from 3,000 loans and eventually as they demonstrated their ability to utilize those loans properly and to build their own capital by way of their savings, uh, they were able to access larger and larger loans. And uh, We're just so happy to see that happening before our eyes and it just tells us that uh, microfinance indeed is a very powerful and effective way to reduce poverty. Alright, thank you Sir Joby.